So we just thought, okay, we're gonna make it work, minimize the amount of hardware, but this has to go. So that was a big decision to make. I don't know if you can see that, but we have to cut a significant amount off to make room for the redonkulous lighting we're gonna have. Most of the really big decisions have been made and we're finishing up the lighting install with the whole team, including an honorary new team member. So we're back to making some pretty good progress on the build, even though we're dealing with some new limitations and protocols and things are going well for the most part. Are you kidding me? So that's right, what happens so. when you don't get to this fast enough. Oh. I mean, we didn't take long. What do you think that was? Like five, five minutes. Five minutes and we cooked our West system before we got to use it. All right, the team is back and we're wearing masks. And it's weird. <laughs> Over the past few months, those of us that were current kept flight ops going, flying solo. But the museum and all projects have been shut down. We're supposed to go into the north end. Yeah. How was the weekend? But we're back now. However, there have been some changes. There are a whole bunch of new laws and protocols in place here, so we're doing our best to adjust accordingly. Even going to grab the crew lunch illustrated how different businesses are implementing similar procedures. A limited number of people are allowed in for pickup, but we can't sit down. So it is what it is. We're wearing masks indoors at all times. So it's been frustrating to be away from the build for so long, but I managed to get a lot of things done in terms of major planning decisions. Here's some of what's coming up in future build vlogs. There's a new optional configuration available now for the IO390 Thunderbolt. And of course that's available in custom colors, so that's gonna be fun. And the most unique package to arrive was the Hartzell Explorer lightweight composite three blade prop. And that'll pair nicely with the kickback proof E-Drive starter from Hartzell Engine Technologies. And we're working with classic aero designs for the interior. It was a lot of fun to go through the process of designing the mock-ups, but I think we landed on a winner with this one. Whew. Yeah, so that was a lot. While I was stuck in the office dealing with all that, brothers John and Perry got the aero leads installed on one of the wingtips. This is my garage at home. This is Perry's garage at home. This is where I built my RV7. This is, uh, I guess, my birth den. Got lots of nice stickers from all over the place. Of course, this is my favorite sticker right here. And uh, this is a special memento, a flight feather from a turkey vulture that I hit on the way down to Florida and the Bahamas. My first victory. <laughs> so it's great to be together again. Just got here getting shots of the sign saying oh, everything's good. closed. How you doing? Timing is everything. And we got it. <laughs> Still amazes me to see you walking, no problem. Yeah, well, I'm really happy. Oh, there's Glenn. <laughs> Glenn was introduced in a previous build vlog, and he's been making great progress since. So this is Glenn. He's got a Tiger Moth, a Wacko. What else have you got here? That's it. Okay, but now uh, you've got a... RV14. And this, watching us build, kind of inspired you to... Uh, certainly watching this and how neat the kit is certainly helped... Uh, help cement my decision. We'll be checking in on Glenn's build to see how he's doing it, and I definitely still intend to catch up with other builders to tell their stories. I've just been having to rethink how to do that for all the obvious current reasons. And a fun future builder story is gonna be the winners of our contest. Stand by, later on the episode, we'll reveal who won that one. Sorry about the delay. There was a lot of really awesome entries, and I wanted to read them all before we picked one. Anyway, let's get back to our build. We didn't know we were getting arrow leads, and we didn't realize that the uh, significant large wingtip lighting was going to mean cutting the stock tip off. So that's cool. It's a bit more work, but for the amount of light we're going to have, it's well worth it. So that's the one that John and Perry did in the garage while the hangar was closed down and I was there for a flight. Anyway, let's get back to present day and get to work. July 20th, 2020. And uh, this is the first day we're allowed to back into the hangar here. Got all these awesome lights here. Before getting into the lighting install, we had one final tweak to do on the canopy. If you missed it, the previous build vlog was all about the canopy. Okay, so we're just watching right here. Yeah. Yeah, you're good so far. I'll let you know if it gets close. Keep coming. This side seems fine. Go back down again. Well, yeah, it's like a human hair, so I guess we wanna we don't wanna be that kind of margin. No. So it's not hitting but it's so close that I can see that you wouldn't want they got a hot day maybe it would expand enough yeah, that that would right. yeah it's so close but it's not hitting 
So how do we work in that tiny bit of space? We can put some tape down to protect the skin and then we can just, just, we'll file, just gently. file it gently. Yeah. If we find that we're not comfortable doing this, we can take the canopy off very easily. It's, a, it's a surprising how, how easy it comes off. It never actually bound anywhere. It just got closer than we but, like. But it was so close that yeah. we were worried that, you know, on a hot day or maybe after a rough landing, you know, something's gonna change a little bit and you open it up and you bend it, right? So yeah. we might as well set ourselves up for success. Yeah. We carefully marked with tape how much material we wanted to remove. I guess this is the way, right? You gotta, okay. you, can't, you can't grow in like that. Yeah, along, yeah, this is the best way, yeah, I agree. So let's be real careful about hitting the bottom. Okay. It'll sand through that paper tape, no? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna take it right down to the tape just yet. Let's try it first. Okay, let me just round it off. Yeah, that got by pretty good. Still good, yeah, you're clear. So that's it. Yeah, great. Yeah. I think it stays within half a millimeter at, at the old, like, yeah. before it was like a human hair, like just almost impossible to even see the clearance. Yeah, okay. For the final finessing and sanding, we decided to take the canopy completely off. Yeah, all right, let's take her off. So I'm pulling this up. Yeah. Just pulling it straight out. Yeah. Here we go. Okay. Okay, lifting straight up. Yeah. Yeah, so that's cool. That's how that works. It'll just pop that sucker right off when you're flying. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So I don't know if you saw the panel design, but we're going to relocate this to be down here. It's going to require some. Oh, is that right? Yeah, because it, it made it impossible to oh, do the center I stack. See. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. Our center stack is gonna maximize our space. Mm -hmm. so we considered building a extension down and it was like so much changes would have to happen. Yeah. And there's a re requirement in Canada that the FAA doesn't have, which requires two independent nav sources. So we would have either had to have a second GPS, completely standalone, but we didn't have space for it. So we put in a very small navcom, which if we had a total failure of the GPS, the navcom can still allow you to do an ILS approach. So that's mm -hmm. what we had to do. Huh. So we just thought, okay, we're going to make it work, minimize the amount of hardware, but this has to go. Mm. Cannot fit that in the middle. So that was a big decision to make. So just a little bit of fine tuning with sandpaper and the canopy was pretty much done. So getting back to lighting, uh, basically I'm going to follow the process as much as I can for this episode. Now a combination of wearing masks and then loud things like this fan, which we had running for most of the day because it was hot and all the power tools and so on with the team working. Audio pretty much sucks, so I'm gonna do my best with the sound mix, but I'll also be doing a bunch of voiceovers while I share nuggets of info that I found interesting, such as how we're doing this in small bits as opposed to dragging the blade through nonstop to help reduce the risk of the blade slash cutting wheel breaking. So the wingtips obviously required a little bit of modification to install the Aerosun VX and the Pulsar NS, but AeroLeds provides a pretty cool conversion kit that was fairly straightforward to work with. Although I am glad that I had experienced mentors to do this with. The filling will go, you know, right over to sort of here. It's like drywalling a joint. John built a wood jig so we could mount the tip on the table to work with it. So now what we'll do is we'll hold it in place, making sure that, you know, the surface is parallel to here. Yeah. And then we'll clico it in place. And then we'll go on the inside and fiberglass it. But first we need to make the cutout for the tip landing light. It's a lot of trial and error to get this perfect because the way this light is mounted, it kind of floats with very little clearance. This is the Aerosun VX. It's a landing slash taxi slash recognition light. Yeah, I'm just letting her up in here. That's all good. The preliminary work is done with a Dremel, but a fair bit of fine tuning has to be done with sandpaper. I love how the instructions literally say, be patient. To avoid scratching the lights, I had my 11 year old daughter Evelyn work on protecting them with a single layer of low profile paper tape. Back. That's it. 
Yeah, push it right in. That looks pretty good. Like that. Like that? Alright. The clearance margin is so small that it really does take a lot of love to get this right. But when you get it, it's worth it. And now to install the mounting hardware. The epoxy resin comes out of two separate containers that have calibrated squirts, so you don't have to worry about measuring. Now the clock starts as soon as those two chemicals touch each other, right? So you might want to put the respirator on for this part. You'd mix it in here to a consistency of peanut butter. It's more easily sandable than this. So, okay. so they use this to, to, to feather like before a paint job sort of thing, right? But this we don't care about because we're not sanding it. We want it to be as strong as possible. Right, so this, this is a thickening additive. It doesn't reduce strength that much. So this is what we want to use, right? This stuff is so light, you shouldn't breathe this. Yeah. So add, uh, add some and stir it up. So we want it so that when we put it in there, it, it'll deform to the shape. But go, go once away. we've clicked the part in, we don't want it to flow away, right? So it's got to be thick enough to stay in place. So it's still pretty flowy. Right. That's, yeah. like, that's like applesauce. We want it more like peanut butter. Yeah. And we're making this much because that's the minimum amount because the squirts were calibrated. Right. Yeah, they definitely say do not use partial squirts for the resin. West system. It's awesome. So yeah, the epoxy mix is either flox or micro balloons, which are much more sandable. In this case, we're using flox because we're not worried about sanding it, but we want it to be really strong. So the idea is to, to get this stuff in all the pores. Okay, so just squish it in, and then we gotta clico it. Everything's all right? Yeah, it's great. So while waiting for the resin to set, uh, we were bouncing between jobs, so we're also doing the leading edge light install. And seeing the grip mat here reminds me that I want to thank them, as well as Cleveland Tools, for the huge giveaway Dave and his sons Nick and Ben won. It was $2,500 worth of stuff in total, including a $750 voucher toward a tail kit from Vans Aircraft. So we're looking forward to following their build. So these brackets are gonna lock in the 36 4000 series 100 watt LEDs. We're burying the rivet holes to mount the uh, mounting plate for the wing tip arrow leads the landing lights. I got back to some fiberglass work while the guys took a lunch break, and then when returning back to the riveting, I was wearing the respirator still, so that's why I look like Darth Vader now. Okay, ready? Uh, quick, 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 quickest little one you can. So no doubt it's a little bit overkill to have the tip lights, which add up to 160 watts, combined with these leading edge landing lights, which are going to be 200 watts for the pair. But landing a tail dragger at night is no joke, and I do intend to do a lot of cross countries, and I want that option to fly at night. Our awesome overkill landing light. Okay, so this is getting trapped like that. Yep. Perfect. That's the one I need to. Don't worry about pushing on that bracket, I got it. Right. Perfect. That one's in. Yeah. All right, very good. And that one's in. Yeah, that's pretty sexy. Next up is preparing the lenses for the leading edge landing lights. This was another project that I could get Evelyn involved with, a little more high profile than the protecting. It's pretty cool to be able to work on this sort of thing with the family. This was the first time Evelyn was able to get some hands-on work, and it was pretty cool to watch her go from being shy and sort of hesitant to really actively involved and taking pride in the work. So, good times. You're gonna squeeze like this and we're going to end up making a dimple like the dimple that that rivet sits in okay so go ahead get the tool right and then squeeze as hard as you can nice and straight. hard nice as you can and straight. Don't yeah, wiggle it. straight yeah that's good okay all right now let's have a look okay there's your dimple all right now this one here go ahead put it in the hole all right keep it nice and square and go ahead and squeeze excellent yeah good now we're in there, yeah, okay, perfect. Go ahead, squeeze. Good job, yep. All right, and then over here. Boop. All right, nice and square, and squeeze. Yeah, perfect, nicely done. Okay, now you wanna do the top ones? That went so well. 
Yeah. We're going to reward you with the ones that show now. <laughs> yeah, these, are the, these are the critical ones, buddy. See the reflection? If you look down the barrel of this thing, you see that? So that would be, you're not centered there. You're not centered there, but if you look straight down and you see the same line, okay, yeah. then, it, then it's square. Make sure you, the reflection matches. All right, okay, go ahead. Yep, excellent. And right here. All right, and look down the barrel once again. Get it square to the piece. Yeah, okay. And come in and squeeze. <laughs> Perfect. Nicely done. <laughs> All right, that's excellent. Okay, I'm going to put that over on the bench. Okay, so now. That was a pretty important job we let you do, by the way. You put it down right there. So what do you think of that? The squeezing part was hard, but that's it. That's all, that's all it was, it was all squeezing. I know, but no, there was a little... Oh, the lining up was easy. Yeah. Oh, okay. Next up, we're max drilling through the plexi and then countersinking the holes. We've got a little sample of dimpled skin that we can use to test to make sure we've got the countersink just right. And with that complete, we're back to fiberglass work. This might seem simple in theory, but it was actually really tricky to get right. The new insert needs to not only be aligned perfectly, but it can't distort the rest of the shape of the wingtip in any way. Yeah, this is five and three eighths. Five and three eighths if I go forward still. So it took a while to be sure we had it right. It's really just a matter of if we push. Right. Twisting. Yeah, Ron. Right. See you later, Ron. And even after we thought we had it set up properly, we went and test fitted it with the rest of the wing to be sure there was no distortion and it still fit perfectly. It follows the flange line perfectly, which means you didn't distort anything. And it's really tight in the nose, which is what really counts. So. Yeah, all right. She's happy. Yep. Good. Looks good. And then after quadruple checking to make sure we had it right, we got set up to fiberglass the tip insert in permanently. <laughs> you know, we won't glass over the Clico sole. We've got some strips, right? So it'll be a strip, a strip, a strip there. The idea here will be we'll, get a, we'll make a batch of just resin, no additive to it. You know, we'll get this all nice and gooey and wet. And then we'll take a paintbrush, we'll paint this with resin. And, and then you'll stick that in place. And then you'll, with your gloves, you'll squish. It's just all clear. You'll squish it so that you get you know, white. fully penetrated with resin, right? Yeah. After the fiberglassing was done and set on the inside, we prepped to fill the seam on the outside, but that was not going to be structural. Should I switch to the respirator when I put in the powder? I could just do it outside if it's not raining. I'll do that just to protect you from it. And by powder, I mean the less structural micro balloons. I used the last of it to mix this batch and then spent a few minutes roughing the surface. Yep. We'll just blast it. Brush it and then blast it. Cool. Yep, good. Put in eyes, put in eyes. Oh. Are you kidding me? Look at that steam. Well, at least it's not time sensitive now. We're gonna start again with the West system, right? But we were out of the West system, so that was that for that day. And the next time I got back, they had actually completed the glassing. Now we were into installing the Pulsar NS wingtip nav strobes. Yeah, what do you think? I that, that, that whole piece of rubber has to go through. Eh? Uh, 
I, know, I didn't crank them, but they're pretty tight. But it's... You can't tell what color this is because it's a diode. So you got to read. The text says it's green right there. I don't know if that's showing up on camera. Sadly, Evelyn wasn't here for this trip to help out with this part. Okay, so here, I'll, I'll put the bolts from this side. You try to sneak a spring over the screw, then into the brass uh, thing, insert the energy. Tighten her up and aim it. So because it's a three-point suspension, you can aim it any which way. Inboard or up or down. Sort of pretty, pretty, neat. It's pretty neat. Yep. Yeah, man, when it works, it works, eh? Took a while to get that right, though. Yeah. That was finessing. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty good. We got a lot more coming as we get into the weeds on all the other things that have been happening that I teased at the beginning of this one. So if you stuck around and if you like these kind of into the weeds, nerdy details, let me know. This one ran long, but I really didn't know what to throw away. It seemed interesting to me, so I kept it. And until next time, keep your flight chops sharp.